Good afternoon. We are in beautiful Tucson, Arizona today, and I'm with uh, David Nolan. It's a great pleasure to uh, talk to the founder of the Libertarian Party and the creator of the uh, Nolan Chart. So uh, thank you very much for joining the Motorhome Diaries today. Thank you. It's a, a pleasure to, to be talking to you. Uh, it's a little bit of an irony that you're here on May 1st because uh, May Day, of course, is celebrated by communists around the world as a, as a significant date in their uh, ideology and revolution, and we are the exact opposite of the communist philosophy. We are, represent the individualist philosophy. So it's a little bit ironic, but it's a very pleasant time of year in Tucson. So it works out pretty well. It's very nice. And uh, yes, happy May Day. Um, and so tell us about the founding of the Libertarian Party. And uh, I'm curious to know what, uh, what do you think about the direction the Libertarian Party is going in right now? Well, the Libertarian Party was founded in 1971 in reaction to the actions of Richard Nixon, a Republican president, who took us off the gold standard internationally. FDR had already taken us off uh, internally and imposed wage and price controls, which is the first time that it happened absent a uh, declared war. It was pretty clear that the Republican Party, as represented by Richard Nixon, no longer stood for anything like the Republican Party of Barry Goldwater. My first involvement in politics was uh, in the Goldwater campaign in 1964. And I still think Barry Goldwater was, was a great man and would have made a, a, an excellent president. But the Republican Party pretty much abandoned any pretense of being a limited government party as early as, as 1969. And a group of us living in Colorado at the time felt that we needed a truly consistent pro-individual liberty party in the political arena in the United States. That was the, what led us to form the Libertarian Party back in 1971. And for most of the years since then, the Libertarian Party has been fairly consistent and fairly effective at representing the, the libertarian, pro-liberty, individualist viewpoint in the political arena. Unfortunately, in the last few years, it's drifted a little bit away from that. Uh, a lot of the people high up in the organization, and I won't name names, ha have succumbed to the temptation of, well, let's water down our message, let's take out the scary parts, and if we do that, then the people will flock to us. Well, of course, they're not flocking to us, and we've lost a lot of the, the value of having a party that stands consistently for liberty. Well, I'll name names, Bob Barr. And, uh, it so, I mean, some people say that maybe libertarians shouldn't be involved in the political process. Um, I was on the website of the Libertarian Party today, and they were talking about um, how the uh, Libertarian Party demands that Obama, um, you know, enforce uh, border security and check Mexicans before they come to America because of the swine flu, which means that the Libertarian Party, at least in that one position, is more status than the Obama yes, administration. Yes, I, I saw that today. One of my, my good libertarian friends, uh, Steve Cubby, called me up to, to tell me about that, and I was pretty horrified. Here, we, as you said, here we've got the party supposedly of individual liberty calling for even bigger government, at least in one area, than the Obama administration. Now, I do not know if anybody is overseeing the stuff that's coming out of the National Libertarian Office, but this is just one and, and perhaps the most egregious example of things that are not libertarian, that are putting the Libertarian Party on record as being in favor of more government rather than less government. I do not understand who's authorizing this, how it's getting through. Uh, I would certainly hope that this will stop, but it seems to be getting worse. I don't know if, if the party's been taken over at the national staff level by infiltrators from the Republican Party or, or what, but definitely they are no longer taking consistent libertarian positions, and often they wind up coming out pandering to the dissatisfied conservative element and, and talking about things like tighter border control and, and uh, other such conservative sounding positions rather than taking the libertarian position of less government, more individual freedom, more personal responsibility, etc. It's very strange and quite disturbing. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So uh, tell us about uh, the, the Nolan chart, because um, you created the Libertarian Party because you wanted to sell the, the ideas of freedom. Correct. The, the Nolan chart also does that. So. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, bit about that and, uh, and where you would appear on the Nolan chart. Well, the Nolan chart, so-called, which, which is, I, I never named it after myself. People just started calling it that, is a two-dimensional grid showing how people can be mapped on, into political, a political space with social liberties on one axis and economic freedom on the other. And of course, libertarians score high in, in both regards. Authoritarians score near the bottom in both regards. Liberals tend to be pretty good on personal liberties, although they're getting less good over time. Conservatives tend to be 
better than liberals on economic freedom, although they're getting less good over time. They're both drifting down towards the authoritarian quadrant. And uh, so the Nolan chart is essentially a map, a diamond-shaped map. I think of it as being like a baseball diamond. And libertarians are, are up at the top. Uh, I would put myself uh, in the little square here. This is a 10 by 10 grid, the little square that is closest to the, the tip of the, of the point, the you know, very top corner of the, of the chart. Very good. Yeah, same here. Uh, so, um, okay, so you've been an innovator in, in those two areas. What about current initiatives? I know, um, Pete, and you were at the um, Liberty Forum, uh, sponsored by the Free State Project. A wonderful gathering. There were a bunch of really intelligent, informed, enthusiastic people there. You know, I hate to have to say it, but I thought the level of energy and, and intellectual curiosity was much higher at that event than at a typical Libertarian Party event in recent years. The energy, uh, people who were getting excited, about freedom, who are concerned increasingly about the direction this country is taking, are turning more to things like that gathering, the Campaign for Liberty, and other venues, and leaving the Libertarian Party kind of in the shadows because the current leadership is so inept and so tied up in internal faction fights that uh, people say, well, I don't want to do that. I want to go out and, and campaign for for good things rather than squabble over who gets to control sure. the treasury of the Libertarian Party or who gets to be on the committee for such and such. Right. Well, there's a lot of innovation out there. Uh, it's not Very the, much. It's, it's not the Libertarian Party, and that's what the Motorhome Diaries is trying to do, is trying to meet with all these uh, these great individuals doing great things for freedom, like yourself. But tell us about the D December 11th group. The December 11th group is a new organization that, that I am in the process of forming with some friends to help redirect the Libertarian Party and Libertarians in general back in the direction of a consistent support for individual rights and individual liberty and consistent opposition to intrusive big government. And because the Libertarian Party has drifted away, we see the December 11th group as basically uh, somebody jokingly called it to, to organize the Libertarian wing of the Libertarian Party. <laughs> That's terrible and funny, but um, well, very good. And so, uh, do you see any areas like of hope, um, you know, for, for freedom uh, in, in the world? And where do you see it? Well, definitely, the greatest single advance, uh, potentially long term, for individual liberty is the the creation and spread of the internet. The fact that we now have the ability to communicate directly one with another worldwide, and information is passed very rapidly. People can learn about what's happening, it can you know, mobilize very quickly, can report on what's happening if there are abuses by the police or, or if troops are sent somewhere. Everybody knows right away. Secrecy has been taken away in large measure from the, the forces of, of evil, <laughs> if you want to call them that. And uh, information is the most powerful tool that freedom advocates have and the rise of the internet has facilitated the spread of information tremendously. Of course, the bad guys realize that, and there's already talk about, you know, Obama wants to, to nationalize or greatly control, control the, the internet. They're, they're worried. They say, well, it's gonna, we've got to stop terrorism, and terrorists are using the internet. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of the people in Obama's administration and in the Republican Party consider us terrorists because we disagree with their agenda. We point out the abuses of government and you know, committed by government against people. You had a very good interview, I guess, yesterday with my friend Terry Bressey, uh, a, a champion of individual rights in the area of freedom to travel. And uh, we are a threat to their plans, whatever you want to call it, you know, the New World Order or, or you know, whatever you want to call it. Libertarianism, broadly defined, the freedom movement, uh, the increasing growth and connectivity of people who believe in individual rights, individual liberty, the government should be minimized, should exist, if at all, only to, to protect individual rights and in a very narrowly defined fashion, uh, you know, they're scared that we're gaining ground, and we are intellectually. Yes, and uh, the difference between us and them is that we don't want to use violence. We want to use peaceful means. We just want to educate people. But yes, we, w we do want to overthrow Very them. important. Yeah. We believe in persuasion. They believe in coercion. Yes, exactly. So, uh, and, but speaking of the internet, uh, we, uh, it was just like maybe three hours ago, uh, when we learned that you lived here in Tucson, when we were rolling through, I Facebook messaged you. You did? You got back to me. We're having this interview, and uh, David Nolan, it's, it's a pleasure. My pleasure also. Thank you very much.